Okay, so <clears throat> I was just doing some meditating or um, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, usually I can get visions. I don't have to close my eyes to do so. Not that you need to know that, but I felt it was important to say. <clears throat> my ways of going about things are not the traditional route, okay? If you've noticed, if you follow my videos, if you've been watching my stuff, you'll notice that I do things a little bit differently for a good reason. Um, this whole idea about organ transplanting, okay? So if a person were to take your DNA, um, even just swapping DNA, even sexual contact, um, anything like that, passing on any DNA is also energetic transfer as well. It doesn't mean they take everything that's yours. It doesn't mean they get to gain your life purpose or they get to take your identity. It just means they get a small taste of it or, or you get a small taste of somebody else's. And it can be good karma or it could be negative karma. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, so when it comes to organs, that's a part of you. That's also got your DNA in it. And a lot of the times they want it to be fresh enough. They want it to be good enough so that when they transfer it to a new person, that it'll be functional, right? It can, you know, uh, get acclimated to your body and they see whether or not it takes or it rejects. A lot of the time, if it rejects, it has something to do with the blood type, which is DNA. And um, it could be that it's not meant to be. So some infection happens or something like that. But either way, if you're cheating death, you know, there's going to be some complications. If you're meant to cheat death, there's a reason for it. It means you weren't supposed to go. Um, now, when it comes to the black market, they do a lot of organ harvesting and crap like that because they're sick. They're sick individuals that don't believe there's conf consequences to what they do. And they haven't done any deep diving or shadow work or healing or anything like that. So they're... Their level of consciousness is a little bit different than those that are more awakened, that have more knowledge, or that have been in touch with themselves and done some healing. Okay? It's not to say they're bad people. It's just they do what the general masses would do. Or they get persuaded in doing certain things. A lot of it comes down to money. A lot of it comes down to wanting to save their family sometimes. So it's out of desperation. And, and other times... Um, it's just because they're they got like they get a kick out of it. So that would be sadism when people do things grotesque or, or horrific and they get joy out of hurting other people and seeing other people's pain. Like pure joy and bliss out of it. Mind you, that's only momentarily because their true sunshine within is not healed, which would be their inner child. So <clears throat> they got to steal it from other people. Now, get back to what I was saying. I personally took myself off the donors list. That's fine. I got a piece of mail um, because originally when I got my license, I think it was my G license way back in the day, I had marked it yes, but then I went and canceled it. And when I got the envelope, I opened it up and it said, um, uh, in response, uh, bad, just B-A-D. Now, I don't know if that's like an acronym for something or they just literally means you're bad. Because you're not uh, conforming or doing what it is that they want you to do. I don't know. That that could be a stretch. Hear me out. But anyway, so I was, I was thinking about it. And I'm trying to trace it all the way back. And the first thing that hit me was the Egyptians, okay? Now, when they did it, it was a form of mummification. So they would remove certain parts. But they would also put those parts in jars and bury it alongside the body. Now, that's symbolic in itself as well, because each of them are given characteristics and each of them are given qualities or, or um, even the jars themselves are given specific duties and jobs. Um, I don't know if part of this was to prevent anybody from digging up and using their organs. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they knew how to transplant, but they could very well have, because they already knew how to do things at, at certain centuries for air conditioning aqueducts, all that stuff. Like, don't bullshit the people, okay? You've been hiding the fact that they were well advanced in their knowledge and workings of how to do things efficiently and eco-friendly. Uh, so get back to what I was saying. Yeah, the the whole energy of removing a part of the body and placing it in a jar they may not have known that this has some consequences as well because that means that the body itself, when it was buried, wasn't whole, okay? It was definitely holy or empty, <laughs> um, but it was not full. 
It was not a full piece. And I don't know if this has something to do with the resonance as well. Or um, there's a lot of the puzzle pieces that I haven't quite sat down and put together. This is just a, a download I got right now. And I would say that the energy itself of that situation of them doing it repetitively over and over and over again, removal of the organs is definitely playing out. It's like a cycle. Um, obviously, there's other reasonings for it and they found other uses and they do certain things. But energetically, that could very well. There's people that have re reported um, being able to get certain memories or be able to remember certain phrases or talk a certain way or even a different language just by taking on the organ of another person, okay? Do the research and you'll find out that scientifically proven it has been recorded, but they don't put it all out there for everybody. Hopefully it'll be more of a, a thing and people are going to speak about it more often, but it does happen. And it's wild because that, that just proves that here in the 3D, that, that sort of transfer does actually happen. It does. And um, I just wanted to jot that down because I think it's very important. If you want to donate, obviously, you're not going to be here anymore. You want to help another person. There's always going to be a good and a bad side to most things, right? Pros and cons. So ultimately, it's your choice. It's your body. It's your temple. Um, can't control what other people do. Uh, to me, it's very important. I keep my body intact and no, I don't want anybody using my organs. <laughs> um, there's this thing about my eyes as well. For the longest time when I was little, I used to walk around in the dark and do everything in the dark and just practice how to do things like pretty much with a blindfold on. And I think I did this out of appreciation from past life that maybe I didn't. And maybe I'm preparing myself. And that's how much gratitude and appreciation I have. I still do it now in my adult years. I still do it occasionally. And I'm pretty darn good at it. So I, I'm very grateful for my vision. And it turns out that a lot of my family members around me, almost every single one of them had a, a form of vision impairment or glasses or something like that. So I'm not saying that has anything to do with anything. But I am very fortunate and I am grateful for it. But I've also gotten tugs here and there on my vision uh, random spurts of, of blurriness, which was never the case. And, and my eyes are checked. They're very, very good. Um, so that's hard to explain in itself. And sometimes I also get the, oh, I don't even know what it's called. Anyways, uh, suffice to say, this was important for me to get out and, uh, if this resonates with you, you'll know what I'm talking about and just be cautious uh, how you treat your body for one and who you allow around you, especially if they talk about certain things like that, even jokingly. Okay.